Hey, it's Clay. How are you guys doing? I hope you are doing very, very well. I wanted to do a lesson today, and um, I, this is kind of something I've been using, working on, and I've found it very interesting, and I think it could be really helpful for you guys. And it's kind of going to involve two things. Number one, it's kind of taking this Hendrixy style move, um, learning it, and then number two is kind of applying it to other situations, you know, because it's not, you know, I'm not in a Jimi Hendrix cover band, and I would assume that a lot of you guys are probably in the same situation, but you probably really dig his playing. So, how can we take this concept and apply it in other situations? Um, you know, maybe you're playing a rock and roll gig, or maybe a praise and worship gig, or something. Uh, this type of a move can be really useful. So, I'm going to go ahead and play um, kind of where I want to I kind of showcase it in two different ways, and then I'll explain it. So, I'm um, just going to play this progression here. that a million times but now I want to play it a little bit differently and kind of keep notice here okay so let's talk about what I did there in the second one <clears throat> so basically what we're doing is we're taking normal chords and we're doing this little move um, to kind of make them more Hendrixy, because Hendrix, one of the really cool things about his playing is that he did this thing where he would dance between rhythm and lead almost at a moment's notice. You know, there was no distinction for him between rhythm and lead. You know, he would just kind of throw little lead parts in with his rhythms, and it made it really interesting and very dynamic. Um, and this is something that we can do too. So <clears throat> let's talk about it. So first of all, I started on this C chord. It's just a C bar chord here on this uh, third fret on the A string. And basically what you do is you slide, so you're here, and then you put your ring finger here on the 5th fret and slide up. And then your pointer finger is going to bar these three strings, that's the D, G, and B strings on the 5th fret, um, and you're, so it's, it's turning into this. And if you'll notice, you know, if you're playing your, your C bar chord like this, three notes is up here. Um, and really, if you want to think about it from like a technical perspective, this is like a G bar chord. So you have these three strings here on your on the bar. But you're just not playing the root note because uh, that's kind of weird for your pinky. You're using, it's kind of in an inversion where the third is actually the root. Um, but anyways, to play that again, let's get it nice and zoomed in here. This uh, seventh string here on the A, or uh, seventh fret here on the A string, and then the fifth fret is barred here with your first finger on the D, G, and B strings. Um, so that's that's kind of chord alteration number one, and then number two is for these. So this is like your G chord. Um, if you play your bar chords like this, that's totally fine. I usually play them like this, but I, you can do it either way. Um, and basically, when you're here, you can do certain things to kind of kind of spice up your chord. And if you think about it, um, you know, if this is kind of the top of the chord, uh, just looking at these the B and E string, you've got notes you can play around with. You can go two frets up here, so from the third fret to the fifth fret, you can do things like um, any of these. This little box here, all of that is 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 good and open to play with. Again, that's the E and the B string on the 3rd fret and the 5th fret. Then going to the G string, you know, this, this major 3rd, you can um, suspend it going up to the 5th fret. And so that when I was playing, I was doing this little... So basically what I'm doing there is I'm holding this 3rd fret on the B string, 4th fret on the G string, and I'm hammering on with my ring finger to the 5th fret, and then going back down to the D string, so... But then you catch all those other notes, too. So... So again, basically all I'm doing there is repeating that pattern we just talked about on the uh, D chord and the A chord. So here, this was that first inversion. Well, you can do that here as well. 
Um, and then on this G, this G chord, you can do the same on the A chord. Um, <clears throat> and let's talk a little bit also about one thing I forgot to mention with this with this uh, C chord uh, inversion. The really nice thing about this is it puts you perfectly in position for your minor for your major pentatonic. So this is. That's C major pentatonic box right there. Um, so you go, and then any of these little, any of those those major pentatonic licks that you already know are perfectly accessible right here. So it's a really powerful reason why that works so well. And when you combine that, You've got a lot of room to play around with. Um, so that's kind of the example from Hendrix's song. But how do we apply this in any of our own music? Well, let's take a chord progression like uh, like like a G, C, D. So G for four bars, C for two bars, D for two bars. It's pretty boring. Um, so let's let's spice it up a little bit. that out. Anyways, the whole point of this is that you can take any time you have a bar chord on the sixth string, any of these bar chords, uh, you can actually change it so that you can play these little Hendrix add-ons. If you've got a C up here, any of those little things will work. Um, and any time you have a bar chord centered on with the A string, so yes, we're playing. Say you're playing an E. It sounds great because it's you, you've got your bar chord. You can do all those little add-ons, those little uh, inversions, those little lead licks, the flavors, all those little things that you can do. And there's so much. You're in that major pentatonic box that we all practice so much and spend so much time and we know a lot of licks in. Well, we can put them to good use anytime you've got a bar chord centered on the A string. So anyways, those are just some of the things you can do. Uh, but the reason why I like this is that it takes, you know, we all play songs where the chords are pretty straightforward and basic, but this gives you a very easy to apply way to spice things up and make it a little bit more lead focused, um, you know, even though those parts aren't necessarily written into the song. Um, so anyways, I'm going to cut it off here. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave it down below. And uh, if you'd like to see some more lessons, please let me know as well. I've got other ideas, so I will see you soon.